I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com. In this video, I'm going to share with you what I know about ginseng, what it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and side effects. Ginseng is one of the most popular and well-researched herbal medicines in the world. It has been used in North America and Asia for thousands of years. In all, there are 11 species of ginseng, but the name ginseng as a nootropic usually refers to either American ginseng or Asian ginseng. Asian ginseng is called Panax ginseng, and American ginseng is called Panax quintifolius. Panax means cure-all in Greek. Researchers in thousands of clinical trials have reported the efficacy of ginseng for anti-stress, cognition, memory, anti-wrinkle, flu, digestion, diabetes, erectile dysfunction, blood circulation, immune deficiency, menopause, as an antioxidant, cancer, and much more. Ginseng is rich in various pharmacological compounds, including a series of polyacetylenes, polyphenolic compounds, acidic polysaccharides, and ginsenicides. Now, both American and Asian ginseng contain ginsenicides, which researchers believe are the most active ingredient. Now, in this video, we're investigating ginseng as a nootropic. Ginseng is the most famous medicinal herb in Asia. It must be grown for five years before it's harvested, and the maturity of the plant influences the density of the active compounds that are beneficial to human health. The term ginseng comes from the Chinese word renxian, which is person plus plant root. Because the root is shaped like, uh, because the root shape of ginseng resembles the legs of a human. Panax comes from the Greek pan, which means all, and akos, which means cure. In traditional Asian medicine, ginseng was used for many different issues affecting human health and overall cure. The four largest producers of ginseng are South Korea, Canada, and the USA, and China, with Canada being the largest exporter, believe it or not. The largest consumer of ginseng is South Korea. South Korea also conducts the majority of research on ginseng, with 1,000 scholars who publish at least 100 research papers per year. The two primary ginsengs used for brain function are Asian ginseng, or Panax ginseng, and American ginseng, which is called Panax quintifolius. Ginsenicides increase protein synthesis and the activity of neurotransmitters in the brain. And ginseng stimulates the formation of blood vessels and improves blood circulation in the brain, which improves memory and cognitive abilities. Ginseng boosts brain health and function in several ways, but two in particular stand out. First, Ginseng boosts physical and mental energy. Now, many of us deal with a lack of energy and chronic fatigue nearly every day. In today's world, and particularly here in Western society, we're suffering from mental and physical fatigue, from overworked, stressed students all the way up to seniors. But this kind of fatigue is not a natural offshoot of getting older. Often, it's difficult to pinpoint uh, what exactly is causing this fatigue. And the first thing that most of us think of is reaching for an energy drink or caffeine or a prescription stimulant. Now, while these options may work in the short term, they don't produce natural energy in your body. This is where ginseng comes in and saves the day. One double-blind placebo-controlled trial with 30 healthy young adults demonstrated Panax ginseng's cognitive benefits. The study found that a single dose of 200 milligrams or 400 milligrams of ginseng reduced blood glucose levels and significantly reduced mental fatigue. 
And second, ginseng improves memory and learning. Most people who use ginseng re report feeling more alert. And several trials show Asian ginseng can improve thinking and learning. And some of the research shows Panax ginseng can boost performance on mental arithmetic, concentration, and memory. One example of several that show how ginseng seems to affect memory and learning is by boosting nerve growth factor and neurite growth in the brain. Now this study was done on chicks with the ginsenicide RB1. The researchers found that this ginseng extract sig significantly potentiated nerve growth factor and neurite outgrowth. Now, Panax ginseng, which is Asian ginseng, and Panax quinquefolius, which is American ginseng, contain a collection of act active compounds called ginsenicides. The triterpenoid saponins, or plant chemicals, are unique to the ginseng species of plants and are steroid-like in nature. Now, here's a mind-blowing statistic. Well over 100 different ginsenicides exist. The major ones are designated ginsenicide RO, RB1, RB2, RC, and so on. All are extracted from the rhizome or the root of the ginseng plant. Now you'll notice if you've reviewed any of the other nootropics listed over on nootropicsexpert.com, that I usually include, include a diagram of the active chemical pump compound in that nootropic. But in this case, I couldn't include a diagram of the compound extracted from ginsenicide because they're all different and there are dozens of them. Each ginsenicide has a unique effect in your body and brain and is often even metabolized differently in your digestive system. Now, other components in ginseng include uh, polysaccharide ginseng, which is the immune system modulator. Ginseng is likely what helps tame inflammation in the brain, which helps host a number of cerebral functions, like neurotransmitters working more effectively. It prevents apop apoptosis or cell death. It improves memory mental energy, and more. Now, anti-inflammatories are not talked about that much in the nootropic community, but I think in the future you'll be hearing a lot more about how important they are to cognitive health and brain function. And then we have microRNAs, which are gene modulators. Researchers have recently figured out that there's up to 73 microRNAs in ginseng. These are tiny, non-coding molecules that are capable of regulating the gene expression of the DNA of your brain cells, which is an extremely complex su subject in itself. But it has the potential to affect everything that happens in your brain. And then we have polysaccharides, which have anti-cancer effects. There's another subject that's not talked about much in nootropic circles, but it's fundamentally important to brain health. And finally, we have the amino acid L-arginine and GABA and glutamate. The neurotransmitter GABA is naturally produced in your brain and, and provides an anti-anxiety and calming effect. And this is likely why supplementing with ginseng is a calming and anti-anxiety effect. Several books could be written on how ginseng affects your brain, including its appetite suppressing qualities, ability to boost cognition, reduce fatigue, reduce depression and anxiety, reduce stress, improve memory and learning, and as a neuroprotectant, and increasing cerebral blood flow. Supplementing with ginseng should boost your energy levels, both physical and mental energy. Ginseng has stimulant-like stimulant qualities and should help if you're dealing with chronic fatigue. But unlike standard stimulants, you'll feel a boost of energy, but it'll come with more of a relaxed feel. 
Now, ginseng can boost mental alertness, and thinking should feel quicker and clearer. Recall and long-term memory should improve. Ginseng also boosts our immune system, so you may be able to avoid the flu or a cold. Ginseng is particularly helpful for anyone with a compromised immune system. And if you're living with or walking around with any, anyone else who's sick. Much of the research on ginseng comes out of South Korea. And much of the research has been done with Asian ginseng or Panax ginseng. Showing how Panax ginseng improves cognitive function. Now American ginseng or Panax quinquefolius has a somewhat different uh, ginsenicide profile from Panax ginseng, but it too shows promise in benefiting human cognition. So we've got the studies include American ginseng boosts working memory, and Panax ginseng protects and fuels brain cell mitochondria, and ginseng improves mental performance. Now, if you want to read the, the briefs on these studies that I'm talking about ginseng, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for ginseng or click on the link below this video and take a look at the clinical studies. Dosage of ginseng depends on the extract used and the quality of the extract. And the results seems to be, seems to be largely dependent on the quantity used. Now to complicate things even more, ginseng dose depends on the region where it's grown, the extract strength, and individual needs. The, the Chinese, for example, recommend two grams daily, while in Europe, the suggested range is 100 to 400 milligrams. Not grams, but milligrams daily. Now many naturopaths recommend cycling ginseng. Use it for four weeks and then take a week break. Remember, ginseng is steroid-like active compounds. So taking it for extended periods without a break is not recommended. Ginseng has been and continues to be extensively researched. Now, these doses that I'm about to quote here are based on, on clinical uh, trial data. So for stress, anxiety, or fatigue, one gram of ginseng daily dosed 500 milligrams twice a day. For type 2 diabetes, 200 milligrams a day. For erectile dysfunction or ED, 900 milligrams of Panax ginseng three times a day. The bottom line is stay within the dosage recommended by the ginseng supplement manufacturer. Ginseng is a natural supplement and side effects are generally mild but it can act as a stimulant in some people, which can cause anxiety and insomnia. Long-term use or longer than recommended or higher than recommended doses can cause headaches, dizziness, and stomach upset. If you're going to use ginseng, you should cycle your dosing. Use the recommended dose for three to four weeks and then take a week off before dosing again. Women may experience uh, menstrual changes when supplementing with ginseng. Ginseng is not recommended by anyone under 18 years old or women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. Ginseng may affect blood sugar levels. So if you're taking um, medication for diabetes, check with your doctor before supplementing with ginseng. Ginseng can interfere with blood thinning medications, antidepressants, antipsychotic medications, stimulants, including caffeine, Ritalin, Adderall, modafinil, adrafinil, and morphine. Ginseng supplements are made from the ginseng root and root hairs. It's available in dried, powdered, capsule, and tablet forms. Ginseng is also included in some nootropic stacks and other com combination supplement formulas. Some come with patented ginseng extracts like Cerebus and 
uh, GS15-4 and others. Now experienced users of ginseng seem to prefer American ginseng over Asian ginseng. Each has its unique species of ginseng and both have unique ginsenicides. But American ginseng is cultivated under stricter conditions, avoiding pesticides and herbicides. And the colder growing climate encourages higher concentrations of the active ingredients of ginseng. So when buying American ginseng, look for Panax quincifolius, and when buying Asian ginseng, look for Korean, or red, or Panax ginseng. And finally, make sure that you buy from a reputable supplement maker. Very recently, GNC, Target, Walgreens, and Walmart stores in the U.S. were found to contain either contaminants or little to zero ginseng. Walgreens ginseng brand was found to contain nothing but garlic powder and rice. That study came from the New York Attorney General last year. Things may have changed since then, but my recommendation is go with uh, major brands that you know that test the heck out of their products. So there's nothing in there but genuine ginseng. So my nootropics expert recommendation for ginseng is 100 to 400 milligrams a day. And that's my report on ginseng. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for ginseng. Or click on the link below this video. There you'll find a full transcript of this video and you'll find dozens of articles and all the well-known nootropics over on Nootropics Expert. If you have any questions or you want to share your experience using ginseng, go to my article on Nootropics Expert and leave it in the comment section at the bottom of the article. And if you want to see more videos on all the popular nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll put, be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.